All right, okay. So the first half is just finished. Um, I'm gonna do the first half and second half, put them two together and um, upload that. But the first half is just finished. And I honestly don't know where to start. I don't honestly don't know what to say right now because this match has basically just been end to end. It has honestly, it ha it doesn't feel like you know like the first game after preseason. It feels like we're looking at a mid season game where all the intensity is there, all the drama is there, all the flair is there. I hate saying that word so much. I really do. But it seems like it's it looks like their classic. I hate saying that so much because obviously that's fucking well shit. But um. Yeah, it really does seem like a German version of the El Clasico right now, with like both teams not liking each other, both teams really going for it, you know, both teams really um, nervous, both teams very, you know, aggravated, they both they really want to you know, show that they're the best team, they really want to win that trophy, and it doesn't feel like a preseason match, it really feels like I said, like it feels like a match between two actual rivals. That are, that are going for like uh, that are playing for like uh, the Champions League in the final match day or something like that. So it feels like a really high intensity match where everywhere a single foul could literally start a fight, and that's basically what this game seems like. And for I actually like that. I actually like that. Don't get me wrong. The football hasn't been good, and uh, football hasn't been good for either team. I feel like the football has been actually so par to be fair, but it has been so end to end and so exciting. That you know, I'm for, I'm looking past that right now, and I'm just thinking, you know what? This this is actually very entertaining. This might not be good football, but it's very very entertaining. So it's not what we kind of what we kind of saw last season, where it was kind of like the opposite, where it wasn't as entertaining, but much better on a footballing term. You know, much better passing, much better pressing, much better defending. You know, much better at defending half spaces, much better in everything. But um, it wasn't as exciting. Whereas this one, it's just like end-to-end -end stuff with Vidal missing like an open chance, basically. Dortmund having like five chances that Neuer saved. Ribéry, he should have gotten a red card. You know, you have so many little subplots right now, so many little sub-stories in this match where I'm just like, yes, I want to see more. I, I can't wait for the next 45 minutes to start. And that's really just what I want to say. I, I just... I think this match is going to be really exciting. Not what I expected at all. Our passing has been so bad that we almost look like a substandard team right now. It has really been that bad. We can't pass out of the back. We can't pass in midfield. The only saving grace so far has been Thiago and Javi. Javi in the fence. And when, well, even when he went forward, you know, the thing that he set up for... Uh, Vidal, that was brilliant, and Thiago just an all-round play because he's been he's looked the only Bayern player so far that's been able to pass. Although he's been doing very risky passes too. Now for Dortmund, surprisingly, uh, thing has been really good, really really good. Um, Rode, which you know is a little bit shocking. I know he's good and everything, but he has looked really really good. You know, really really good. Um, so that, that's a little bit surprising to me. You know, if he if he continues playing like that, I'm gonna be looking forward to seeing him at Dortmund. I'm gonna looking forward to see how he develops and everything because he has looked really good. You know, um, then you have the other like then you have other players for Dortmund that have looked really good, especially you know the likes of Passlag. Although yeah, he's been a bit of a prick really, but he's he's looked really good. Um, then you have the likes of Dembella who has. He really only has really shined in like the last twenty minutes or so, but he has been you know really excellent in the last twenty minutes or so. Um, and then you have Ramos and Aubameyang who's have a, who had a nice partnership. Who always like one going forward, one going backwards, just to attract the, the centre backs a little bit out of space. And that has really caused Hummels a lot of problems so far. I am hoping that's gonna change in the second half, but we'll see. Ultimately, we'll see. Um, but that's just my first half take on the match. I'll see you guys in the second half once the match is finished. And I've done some reactions as well. Um, although there's only one thing that was really to react with, and that was me screaming on the Vidal missed chance, which wasn't really fun. <laughs> uh, honestly, that should have been a goal. It was a wasted chance, in my opinion. But I'll see you guys for the second half. Peace out. Hopefully, we'll have the trophy by then. Peace out and have a nice day. Bye. Gegen Bayern kann man mal verlieren. Gegen Bayern kann man mal wirklich verlieren. Hello and welcome everybody. What is going on? So we have just beaten Dortmund in the Super Cup. The most important trophy of the season. More, more important than the Champions League. More important than the DFB Pokal. More important than the Bundesliga. It is the most important trophy in the world. It has the word super in it. And that's why this trophy is super awesome. Now to say that we have... Uh, maybe just a little bit undeserved that be an understatement let's be totally honest here um we weren't really that great you know un until Vidal's goal we actually were a team that has been struggling the most and um honestly you know I was looking at that I was thinking okay you know what this is normally the point where we score normally when the point when we play really 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 badly 
um, and the other team doesn't score, that's normally the point when, exa exactly when they are really dominating, that's the point when we counter, and that's basically what we did in this match. And Vidal scores, first of all, he hits a thunderous shot, it isn't saved by Berkey. Berkey just, like, parries it literally just in front of him, so um, Vidal has a chance to be able to get that air again, and he finesses it in, and it was like a Peach of a ball, peach of a ball, beautiful, beautiful, honestly, really beautiful. And then we score a second goal. After Dortmund, they kept trying to go forward, it kept trying to create chances, but after our goal, it just seemed like we had a little bit of spark. It seemed like we had the energy, we, we, had, the, we had the creativity, we had everything to really go for it, and that's exactly when the game changed in our favour. So, you could say that we were better, we were the better team for 30 minutes, but for 60 minutes, I'd say that Dortmund was the better team, um, and that's me being totally honest here right now. So, um, it was quite good to see, obviously, us coming back because it shows that, you know, we haven't actually, we haven't actually been, at, we are, we're not at our limits, which is kind of, which is kind of already known, but uh, we're not at, you know, we're not at the best yet, and perhaps for maybe 30 minutes or so, we saw us play really good, but it also shows that Dortmund are a really good team, considering that they've been pretty poor in preseason, and they were, even they weren't at their best today, but even then, you know, even with key players missing, missing and whatnot, not key players ha not having picked up form, it is clear and evident that, you know what, Dortmund, they mean business this season, and you don't want to face them in the Champions League unless you're 100% prepared. So, that's just my thoughts on Dortmund as a whole in this season. I do think they're going to do great. I thought that maybe, you know, with the young players that they have, um, where you know, they kind of replaced young players, more like um, more like prospects and more like talents with more established players. I thought that's going to backfire on them. But having actually seen how much, how good they can perform, knowing how good of a coach Tuchel is, you, you can just say that, you can just see that they're going to be a very dangerous team despite having so many youngsters. So, um, that is all there is to Dortmund. Literally, I'm going to stop talking about Dortmund right this second. But I just want like I said, I just wanted to mention that they're, they're looking like a very good team. And they, you know, you don't really want to face them in the Champions League this season. I think that they'll probably finish second. But I'll get to that probably um, like two days or three days before the Bundesliga actually starts. When I'll do my full Bundesliga prediction where I think every team will rank in terms of position, in terms of place, in terms of where they'll finish the season. Like I did last season, I know not many people were there last season, but this season, um, yeah, I'll be doing that in a different way. But that doesn't matter. We won the Super Cup, the most important trophy of the season. And um, this is just not a dig at Pep, okay? I, I'm not, not at all, right? I, I like Pep. You guys know that I like Pep. Um, I have criticized him in the past before, but in general, you know, I'm a Pep fan. I'm a Pep fan in general. Um, but it's not a dig at him right now, what I'm saying, but Pep is always talking about, yo, super players, the super, super spieler, super, super teamwork, super, super, whatever, 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 and then Ancelotti wins it. And honestly, this game is like the total opposite of what Pep Guardiola would want. This game is basically, if you look at the two teams, if you look at Dortmund and Bayern, you could say that Dortmund really played like we would have played under Pep in this match. And um, although our style under Ancelotti hasn't really been defined just yet, and we're still searching for it, you, that, that's basically how we can expect us to go this season, where we'll take our one or two chances and then we'll convert those chances. We're going to be much more clinical because we're going to have much better chances, you know, one-on-one -on -one chances, one or -on two chances, that kind of thing, where obviously this, this um, conversion rate is much higher. But um, I, I, honestly, I did think that this was gonna uh, that, that this was like a perfect example of a preseason um, preseason game that wasn't a preseason game because the intensity in the first half, especially, was there. In the second half, like I said, it kind of dropped off a little, and um, that was mainly just the players getting tired. Of course, it's a pre it's a, the first game of the preseason, so you ideally want to finish the game in the first half, but no team was able to do that, and that's why second half, there were, you know, both teams kind of got phased out both teams were tired but ultimately we when, once we scored our goal we really showed it and we really went for it and Hummels he got the assist for the second goal for Miller's goal literally came out of nowhere as well like the first goal sort of and uh it's just really good to see and honestly Javi he was honestly amazing in this match Hummels yeah you could tell that this was his very first match for us um, he was passing a little bit off. He was a bit shaky. You know, it could be because obviously nerves and everything. Going back to Dortmund, going back to the Signal Iduna Park, um, or should I say, Westfalen Stadion, and obviously him being a bit nervous because the fans are booing him and everything. So you could see, you could maybe point that to that. I think it's just because it's his first game under Ancelotti. I know that doesn't really mean too much. But um, for a defender, it does because obviously you need to have communication with your right back. And considering that he hasn't played with Lam in like what two or three years now, maybe you know, 
maybe I maybe could blame that on that. Maybe could blame that on that. I will blame it on that. I'll, you know, I'm the, I'm the same as always. I give players time. I give players a good year, a good year and a half, just to really get into the team. And after that, then it's when I'll be critical of the players. But Hummels here a shaky start. He had, he had a shaky match today. But Javi here had a fantastic match today. And now you kind of beg the question: What are you gonna do with Javi? Are you gonna put him in midfield? Are you gonna leave him at centre back? Are you gonna play him? You know, what kind of role will he have? He's still our most he's still our most expensive player of all time at 40 million euros. So what exactly are you gonna do with Javi right now? Because he in kind of he's in the kind of position where due to his versatility, he's not really a starter in any position, but more so a backup for every position. You don't really want to be that. You just want to be a. You just want you want to have a defined position. And um, honestly, from what I saw today in defense from him, I really like that. I really do like that. I think he gives a good option as a centre back. But that's just my thoughts though on the game. The celebrations are going on right now, so I want to kind of leave and just watch the celebrations a little bit, ladies and gentlemen. But as always, you can rate, comment, favorite, subscribe. This was Mirza and TV. Peace out and have a nice day. Peace out. Bye. Super, super.